How is everybody doing? In this video, we're going to take a look at Elton John on compact disc between 1980 and 1990. Um, the 80s. <laughs> um, it wasn't a decade that was very kind to a lot of artists that were pretty big in the 60s and 70s. Um, you've got to remember that Elton John was an absolute giant in the 70s, uh, massively popular worldwide, as well as the US and the UK, his home country. Um, technology had changed and uh, some of the technology didn't really suit the music. You know, the songs are still similar, but you've got these very, very dated uh, keyboards now when you look back and stuff like that. So it was hit or miss. Uh, with Elton and of course um, he, I think he reached his lowest ebb <laughs> in the mid 80s but I was reading this book last month and it inspired me to make the these videos and uh, it's fantastic it really is I recommend it um, Elton John all the songs the story behind every track it is really good there's a lot in it it's exhaustive um, uh, 1984, Elton gets married to Renate Blowell, I think her name was. She was a tape op, I think. But um, yeah, aside from all that, um, this book is fantastic and it has inspired me. And I'm listening to the, his music again and reevaluating it and stuff like that. So let's get on with the albums right now. Okay, his first album of 1980 was titled 21 at 33. Um, it was his 21st album at the age of 33, but that's not totally true. It's not his 21st studio album. I think it includes hits, compilations and live albums. Anyway, that little detail aside. Um, yeah, this was... This was a strange album. It, it was... It, it, it's not bad, but it's it pales compared to, um, you know... Anything in the 70s, really, I'll be totally honest. Um, um, himself and Torpen weren't writing um, together that much. Um, Gary Osborne was still writing most of the tracks, but he's done collaborations on this one with other people like Tom Robinson. He got Chasing the Crown. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, it could, could be like Annie Elton, upbeat rock songs from the 70s, really. And uh, it's got this kind of... Um, you know, chorus on the guitars and stuff like that. The sound is a little bit cold. Um, he did a lot of recording in Super Bear Studios, France, um, in late or in '79, late '79, stuff like that. So enough for three or four albums. So uh, a lot of the material here is from from '79 and stuff. Little Genie, that's a good track, yeah. And then you got Sartorial Eloquence, the typical Elton piano ballad, and then Two Rooms at the End of the World. That's a Torpen lyric about his writing with. Um, with Topin. Two Rooms would again um, pop its head up in 1991, a compilation album where fans, um, guests made an album of Elton John songs. White Lady White Powder, we all know that's a cocaine song and uh, <laughs> that's actually an, an, an enjoyable song. Dear God, that really plods along. I'm uh, never really into it. Um, it's it's over sentimental. Um, never Gonna Fall In Love Again, Tom Robinson. Um, Wrote that track. Um, yeah, it's just meanders along and take me back. That's kind of a country ballad. That's not bad, but it's again, you know, you could do without it. And then give me the love. Um, I like that. It's almost kind of harks back to, um, you know, we'd say a little bit of Philly soul in there and stuff like that as well. But overall, yeah, you know, it's got a lot of session musicians here now as well. And, um, you know, Steve Lukather. From Toto was on that album and stuff, but again, it's not essential. But yeah, it's it is what it is. Next up is The Fox. I think this is one of his strongest albums of the eighties, and it's one one of my favorites. Uh, I really really like The Fox. Um, yeah, again, some of the materials recorded in seventy nine, and uh, you know this is eighty one. It was an album, uh, a video compilation made for this album. <laughs> believe it or not. Was a, for the length of the album, I think there was a video for every song, uh, which is very unusual at the time. Uh, Breaking on the Barriers, great track. Heart in the Right Place, again, that's another good one. Um, Just Like Belgium, that was another that was another single, but it didn't really go anywhere in summer of 81. I like Belgium, it's great. 
Nobody wins. That's kind of synthetic stuff like that. Um, Lindrum on it, I think. Uh, I think Jeff Procuro from Toto programmed a Lindrum, believe it or not. Fascist Faces, that's another great one as well. And you've got Reverend James Cleveland doing the narration. Um, then, of course, the um, highlight of this album for me is Carla, Etude, Fanfare, Chloe. Um, Carla Etude is a monstrous piece of orchestral work. Um, reminds me of Tonight from Blue Moves. And um, really, 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 really beautiful piece of music. Uh, he is at his peak here. Uh, Fanfare is kind of a synthetic um, passage that goes into Chloe, which is, again, uh, you know, we'll say typical kind of, you know, kind of mid-paced. Elton um, kind of ballad. It's quite good. It reminds you a little bit of Blue Eyes, I suppose. Yeah, Heels of the Wind. That's another good rocker. And then, of course, Elton's song, which is just Elton on a piano. Again, that has um, a lyric that has um, homoerotic, <laughs> homoerotic uh, overtones. In the video, there's a guy in college, a, a schoolboy, and he's idolizing this older schoolboy. Uh, he looks up to him. Uh, so yeah that was quite ahead of its time as well and then you've got the fox which again is another good song so i would say that the fox is a strong album and um i really like it you know um it's it's a solid strong album I, again it sounds kind of more like a 70s stuff uh because the technology hasn't really hit this album apart from nobody wins which is kind of a bit awkward and stuff like that yeah but uh, yeah so that's that's that um what else have we next album is jump up now this one again i i think bernie torpen has said that this is one of their worst ones um i kind of agree in some ways um dear john let's throw away spiteful child again nothing special ball and chain doesn't really go anywhere and legal boys this is one he wrote with tim rice and uh, that's probably one of the best songs on the album. And um, I really like that. Uh, again, he would collaborate with Tim Rice um, in 1994 on the Lion King soundtrack. Uh, then we have I Am Your Robot. I mean, that is a horrible, horrible, horrible song. And I'm not even going to talk about it. Blue Eyes, fantastic. I remember that on top of the pops in April 82. And then, of course, we've got the amazing Empty Garden, Hey, Hey, Johnny. That was a tribute to John Lennon. Very sad song. Fantastic. Princess, eh, it's not bad. Um, you know, it's it's better than most of the stuff on side one. And then, Where Have All the Good Times Gone? That reminds me of the Four Tops and stuff like that. Um, again, I like it. And then, All Quiet on the Western Front, a ballad about World War One. Quite a powerful song. Uh, Jeff Percaro from Toto drums on this album, and his drumming is out of this world um <laughs> overall i love jeff procure so yeah jump up um doesn't really make me jump up that much but it's okay next you have uh love songs uh, this is a compilation that came out on vinyl back then uh look at that isn't that amazing the, this is called the watermelon logo i love all the um west german i think it's pdo um uh, CDs from the um, early 80s. They look absolutely fantastic. This is a fantastic compilation. I really like it. This sounds fantastic as well. Um, it really, really does sound fantastic. Um, the songs, uh, you know, Blue Eyes, Little Genie, Sartorial Eloquence, Shine On Through, Chloe Elton's song tonight, Song for Guy, Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest Word, Princess, Chameleon, Return to Paradise, Never Gonna Fall in Love Again, Strangers, and then somebody's final love song in All Quiet on the Western Front. So a nice collection, really nice collection and a pleasure to listen to. Uh, next is a bit of an oddity, really. This is called The Superior Sound of Elton John, 1970 to 75. Now, this was um, remixed from the original multitracks into a new dimension of sound. Um, this one was um, released by Dick James. And I love, again, the artwork on the CD. It's fantastic. Uh, I think Gus Dudgeon was responsible. So, again, it's a nice compilation. You know, he, he does remix them. Um, they sound a little bit clearer and stuff like that as well. And you can see here, it's got a nice uh, selection of material. Um, especially Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding. One of my favourite Elton John songs. 
Uh, this was also released on vinyl and cassette at the time, but I picked this up pretty cheaply and I thought I'd just get it just to see. And um, yeah, I really like it. I think it's great. Um, nice collector's piece. Too Low for Zero. No, this was his, I guess, his comeback in 1983. Um, and it is a very strong album and it had um, some hit singles. So he's back with Torpen on this one fully. So um, yeah, fantastic. And um, Cold as Christmas, I really like that track. Um, I'm Still Standing. That was a big hit. Too Low for Zero. Love that one as well. Religion. It's a great track. And then, of course, the Taupin love letter to his girlfriend at the time or wife. I guess that's why they call it the blues. Crystal. Not a great song. Uh, Kiss the Bride. Whipping Boy. Saint. And One More Arrow. This is a strong album. Um, I really like it. Um, yeah, it really is strong. And uh, probably, I mean, I, 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 I think that I, I love the Fox, but this is definitely... This is definitely his strongest album of uh, of the 80s. There's no way around that. And of course, this is the uh, 1998 remaster. Um, yeah, the classic years. Um, this one, um, again, it's just got extra tracks and you have Earn While You Learn. And that's from around 78, around the sessions for a single man. And then we also have a Dream Boat and the retreat uh so the retreat i think is from 1981 fox sessions era uh yeah so it's a it's a good album i really like it okay next up is breaking hearts yeah this one definitely nowhere near as strong as too low for zero um but it had some pretty big hits in it after all. You've got, um, what you call it, Sad Song Say So Much. That was a big hit. Uh, but for me, it's a bit formulated. I'm not really too fond of it. Um, somebody, uh, you've got uh, Passengers, which was another hit. And um, that's based on some I, I, some South African song or something. You know, I, I, there's a link on. There's a, there's, if you type it in in YouTube, you, you'll hear the uh, kind of what it's based on the original, you know, the do, 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 do. and uh, yeah, it's pretty catchy. Where's your shoes? That was another one, but um, little refrigerator that's absolute throwaway and stuff like that. Did he shoot her burning buildings? It, it, the, the kind of themes here are a bit, um, you know, like the themes that they've wrote about uh, on Yellow Brick Road and stuff like that, you know, um, in Neon. That's another good one, I really like that, but. Overall, um, I was always kind of a little bit disappointed in this album. Um, but the core band are back together on this. Um, Davy Johnson on guitar, Nigel Olsen on drums, Dee Murray on bass. So yeah, it's a, a return to form um, as a band. But again, as an album, um, yeah, it's not as strong. Next up is Ice on Fire. Now this again is... Uh, you know, Elton in 85, and, uh, you know, he's kind of, it's it's patchy and stuff like that. Uh, again, you know, there's a lot of guest musicians on it, like Nick Kershaw plays and stuff. George Michael, you know, he was trying to, the, the sound quality is fantastic because Gus Dudgeon is back in the production chair. But um, the thing is, um, the material is not that strong. Um, Nikita was a big hit from the album. And then you have another one, Wrapper Up. And that. Uh, it's just Elton and George Michael naming out all these famous women, uh, which is a bit bizarre because the two guys, you know, obviously like they're, they're they're both gay and stuff like. So it's it's a bit strange. Like yeah, it's you know they should have named out men instead. I think you know. Um, but it's yeah, um, it's it's not great. You know what I mean? But it, like I said, it sounds fantastic. I I like the Gus Dudge and stuff. Uh, I think that Chris Thomas's production was very dated now. Um, you know, even though Elton had more success with Chris Thomas, he's another one hit with his stuff. But yeah, um, I'm not sure. It's not my favorite. And here we come to Leather Jackets. This is probably his worst album of all time. It really is bad. Uh, the material is poor. The production is shocking. Um, even the um, the photograph, like they're just dressed up as bikers. It's it's horrible. Um, I love the Rocket Records logo, <laughs> the train. Uh, this is a terrible album, and I'd say you should avoid it at all costs. But there's one good track in it, uh, Slow Rivers, and that's a duet with uh, Cliff Richard, and it's got really nice um, strings on it and stuff. But 
his voice was half shot as well at the time. I think he had nodules on his vocals and he had to get some surgery uh, the year after. But it's a, it's a, um, yeah, this is a, this is a, a bad album. Um, I can't find anything good about it. The production is, yeah, it's just horrible. It really is. I, I think it's the lowest. I, I, I even think that uh, Victim of Love is better than this uh, because it's actually quite funny. But this one is, yeah. I'd say, and they've, re they've reissued it recently on vinyl, you know, I, I think it's a waste of time. To get it. Uh, no, this is a great album, um, live in Australia with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Um, his voice was really shot at the time, and you can hear it, he's struggling. But the choice of material here, he went back through the catalogue, and you've got things like 60 Years On, I Need You to Turn to the Greatest Discovery tonight. Sorry, seems to be the hardest word. Um, this is fantastic. Um, the concert was in two parts in late 1986, where you had him playing with piano and the um, orchestra and then the band for some of it. Um, Madman Across the Water, Tiny Dancer, Candle in the Wind, Burn on a Mission. Um, yeah, fantastic selection of material. Uh, there's also a video to go with this, um, and it was pretty cool. Um, Candle in the Wind was released as a live single as well. Um, but this is fantastic and even though his voice is half shot definitely worth getting next up is red strikes back uh this is kind of more style over substance um the more i the more the years go on i don't like this album i i think it's just that's all his stuff he sold as well he auctioned it off um i think at the time he won a case against the sun as well for for lying about him and stuff but town of plenty that's okay word in spanish uh, mona lisa and matt hatter's part two <laughs> um yeah he's recalling one of the songs from honky chateau uh i it's very loud and it, it, the keyboards and stuff are just annoying it sounds very cold i don't want to go on with you like that again um yeah it's and japanese hands that's, that's that's actually bizarre you know I, the lyrics and stuff it's it's, it's like he's singing doing it once or twice like it's not it's almost like somebody else singing the song like there's no feeling in it it's horrible good my brand brand on uh camera never lies throw away heavy traffic i really like that one about a bunch of junkies really like that then you got poor cow again you know you could do without it and then you have um since god invented girls that's a nod to brian wilson and i think carl wilson and bruce Johnson from the Beach Boys actually day born that, but uh, yeah, um, nah, I, 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 it's dated. I don't like it. It's he's just going through the motions. You know what I mean? It's, it's like Elton John karaoke, and the songs aren't very memorable. It's um, and and it doesn't help. It's a digital recording, and it sounds fuck. Uh, sorry for cursing. It sounds awful. Uh, and then you have um the last studio album of the nineties. Uh, ah, sacrilege. The eighties, <laughs> sleeping with the past. Uh, this is a strong album. I really like this one. Um, songs are great. Um, this was recorded in Puck in Denmark. Uh, the studio burned down about four or five years ago. Um, not this is a good album. Durban Deep is great. Healing Hands is a fantastic song, almost gospel. Whispers is a great track. Club at the End of the Street, good as well. And then it kind of peters out a little bit. Sleeping with the Past Stones, Throw Sacrifice. That was a that was a massive hit in 1990 when it was reissued for AIDS charity. Um, then it tails off a bit, but it's a strong album and they kind of wrote it to, um, it was written for all their idols back in the 60s and stuff like that. Um, I enjoy it, yeah, it's quite good. Um, it's a lot better than Red Strikes Back and definitely, you know, leather jackets. <laughs> and then we have um, the best of, the very best of, sorry. And that's a double CD compilation of all hits. And there's, um, extra tracks on this that were new um easier to walk away it's another strong one as well and you gotta love someone so um that's it um they are the studio albums in the in the 80s and finally this to be continued this box set was released in late 1990 uh, this is kind of more or less like an anthology. Um, it's it's a nice set. It came out on cassette as well, I think. I'm not sure if it came out on vinyl. This one is a limited edition with, with Elton. There's no such thing as limited. Um, so, yeah, the inside is yeah. the, the era of 
the beginning of the box sets, I guess, the 80s, um, 90s. Wraps up like this, and you've got four CDs and a booklet. And each CD forms part of the actual. Each CD forms part of the actual graphic. So here you have CD one, the discs. Are, um, <laughs> funny how it's. Yeah, there you go. Um, they're all different colors. And uh, this was um, also reissued, I think. Um, I think it was in 95 or 2000, I can't remember. Just came in a different. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a different. Um, it was done in a kind of a book form. And there you go, the pink. It's really cool. Um, this is um, MCA, so all these are um, uncompressed. Yeah, so this was the US um, record label. So um, some nice stuff on it. Um, just some sleeve notes and all that. Yeah, good artwork and stuff like that. So there you go. Um, it's a pity that there's not, um, you know, more. How will I put it? There's a few rare things on it, like, but it's a pity that there's not more B sides and stuff like that, like there was on the diamonds uh, box set, which I actually don't have. Um, probably get it sometime, but um, it's only on the um, very last disc. Oh, this is, there's a couple of bluesology tra tracks yeah well come back baby bluesology that's the well that's the only one i think yeah um but um most of it is just greatest hits like i said um the odd live thing um there's there is non-album tracks but they're up they were non-album tracks that were singles so they've come out in the uh reissues um 82 to 90 that's the last disc it's got empty garden okay i guess that's what they call the blues um what else then candle in the wind live that was a single and then carla etude live in 86 don't have the sun go down on me 86 i don't want to go on with you like that the 12 inch remix give peace a chance 1988 sacrifice 1988 made for me you gotta love someone I swear I heard the night talking. Easier to walk away. So yeah, there's a few bits and pieces, but you know, it's a shame that there wasn't one disc dedicated to um, rounding up of the 80s, um, the 80s uh, unissued stuff. So yeah, that's it. That's to be continued. And um, speaking of which, to be continued, Elton from 1990 onward is to be continued as well so thanks for watching feel free to subscribe and take care